long-term time lapses have usually been shot over weeks, months or years. So you get a lot of images when doing this. And of course, you get a lot of very different situations in terms of the light conditions in which you will be shooting. The basic idea behind editing those sequences is to make a clever filtering of all of those images in order to just keep those who would lead to a smooth progression and just show the essence of what you want to show in this time lapse, mostly a building being constructed or something else. LR Timelapse Pro offers a couple of very specialized tools that will allow you to deal with such sequences and to get very good results. Well, let's get started. This is a demonstration sequence that I got from one of my users. I will use it to just show you the basic concept for long-term time-lapse editing. As you can see, different light situations, the day parts and the night parts turning all the way orange here. And then you get different weather. You see a lot of flickering here. You have some rain spots covering the lands. And those are all effects that are uh, annoying to, to watch. That means we would like to get rid of those. Yeah, in LR Timelapse Pro, you can switch to the long-term workflow. And basically, it's a very similar workflow to the other ones that you might know already. The main difference is that now you have this filter tab here. And uh, once you click on it, you will see you get two additional curves generated. The first curve that was already here is the blue luminance curve. You know that from the other workflows. But now we have two additional curves. The one is in orange here. This is a contrast curve. This pink one here. And this is the U curve. It just basically shows the differences in the color temperature here. When the curve is very low here, it's the orange parts. When the curve is up here, it's the daylight part. This curve allows you to distinguish between the different types of images that you shot. And the filters that we are going to talk about here, they will allow to filter the images that you don't want. Every filter has the same slider. So basically, you can just choose which filter to use and then just think about how you would like to use the sliders. The first thing here is the smoothing slider. I will show you with the luminance. As soon as I drag this slider, you'll get a smooth luminance curve. And you can set the amount of smoothing just by dragging the slider. And this is very similar from what you know from the deflicker tool, where you as well get a smooth curve, which will serve as a reference for the deflickering. And the same happens here. So basically, if you have defined this smooth luminance curve, you can use this slider here to narrow down the bandwidth of the images that will stay in your sequence. So when I release the slider, let me drag it a little bit more. Now you see only images that are very close to the smooth curve will get preserved. And the more you drag the slider to the right, the more this happens. And you can observe this slider for the high areas coming down as you slide the left slider up, this comes down. You can imagine this is like a like the bandwidth that gets narrower and narrower, just leaving the images between those two sliders in the sequence. If you want to just get rid of the images below this curve, but not those that go up, for example, you can just remove this check mark and then you will be able to individually change the bandwidth for the highlights versus the lower areas here. Now you can see you have the peak, peaks to the top, but not to the bottom. We'll see later when this could come in handy. As soon as you applied any filter here, you can just play back and you will see it's only the non-filtered images that will play back. So you can instantly see what you have done, the results that you got so far. Okay, this would be one approach to start just filtering the luminance, but I will use a little bit different approach for this sequence. Um, I will reset everything. With the U slider, what I will do is not use a smooth reference curve. 
I will just instead use a constant one, a constant line as a reference, and I will shift this line up until it meets this part where the most of the daylight images are. So after doing this, I have nearly only daylight images left, nearly because there are a couple of exceptions here where I have those peaks down. I only moved this reference line yet. Now I will apply the filtering and I will just remove those peaks from the shadow areas here. I will unlink this and only drag up the shadows a little bit so that you can see those peaks to the bottom. Now we can play back again and just see what we have left. And it's mostly only the daylight images that are left here. So currently what we are doing here is just observing this pink line and trying to, to minimize the deviance in this line just to have images with a similar color temperature. So this is our first filter. And although you can apply those filters all together, um, I don't recommend doing so. I would rather recommend to do one filter after the other and after having one filter done, click on filter images. And this will remove the images that you filtered away to another folder. I just click on yes here and we get a second folder here with the removed images. We have only 555 images left. I reset my settings and now let's have a look at the curves. We still have the blue curve with some flicker effects and we still have the orange curve with some very low contrast images. Here we have that rain. It's a low, low contrast image. One thing that's very important is that you can combine those filters with a reference area. So you can just use the same reference area that are used to using with the deflicker tool um, in order to get better results for the filtering here. So when you change the reference area, you will see the curves change as well. What I did now is play around with the reference area until I got a reference area that helped me to isolate those images with low contrast. And exactly at those positions, we get the contrast curve drop where the contrast is very low due to the rain covering the lens. So let's eliminate those effects just by using the contrast filter. And you already know how this works. In this case, I will go for a constant smoothing and just remove the lower parts here. And you can just advance here with the plus sign and you will see the images will get removed automatically. Let's play this back. And now the images should be gone that have the raindrops on the lens. Another option would be not going for the constant one, but just use the smoothing slider and make a rather high smoothing value. This will give a rather straight curve, but just follow the global changes a little bit. At the end, it always depends from your sequence. After this filtering, again, let's click on filter images, bring those filtered images to the removed folder. And it might happen that you still have some images that you would like to remove. In that case, you can just select those with your mouse and then just right click, click and remove images. This will do the same and just bring them to the removed folder. The last thing that we could do now is just deal with the luminance. So let's do that. Do some smoothing here and just remove the images that are a little bit off. We click on filter again. Once you've done with filtering, it would be the regular workflow. Just uh, keyframes wizard, save, bring this to Lightroom, then edit the keyframes, come back, reload, do the transitions and 
um, at the end you could do the visual previews. In this case we have a JPEG sequence so the visual previews are not going to work. That's why I recommend that when you're in Lightroom just use this filtered sequence it's not that many images anymore and use a Lightroom feature to convert them to DNG. Then just load that DNG sequence into LR time lapse and you can work with the visual previews and the visual D flicker here. And once you've done that, you will already have a very smooth sequence. And then there is only one additional thing when rendering the video. I'd recommend to use the LRT Motion Blur Plus feature here. Um, I'd set it to medium or even high just to get that nice crossfade between the images and uh, get the sequence even smoother. I hope these tips can help you improving your long-term time-lapse photography and I'm convinced that you will quickly manage to know how to work with those filters. The order in which you apply the filter is a little bit individual. It depends from the, the sequence and what exactly you would like to do, which kind of look you would like to obtain. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the forum. I'm reading there very frequently and I will try to do my best to answer your questions. If you have some results you would like to share, please share them in the forum as well. Check out my other tutorials and I hope you have a lot of fun with Alert Timelapse 5. See you next time. Bye.